Hello there guys, and before we start, I want to feature some artwork actually inspired by my Spinosaurus video. Link in the description. I recently received a message off of DeviantArt from my friend, King Over Rats. The link to his DeviantArt is in the description. He makes very, very awesome looking art on DeviantArt. And he was inspired by my comments about a speculative, fully aquatic, whale-like Spinosaurus descendant that he created a drawing of his interpretation of a fully aquatic Spinosaurus, which he calls Spinocetus. It is an incredibly interesting drawing, and I advise all of you to visit his DeviantArt page. If you have any fan art you would like to send me, and be featured in one of my videos, please send it to me. Alright, last time we looked at a gigantic crocodile-shaped amphibian. And what about today? Well, I'll get to that soon. First, I want to gladly say I missed one of Priyanasukas' pop culture appearances. Priyanasukas has extremely recently been featured in the game Jurassic World as a legendary dinosaur, even though it isn't even a dinosaur. Well, yeah, I missed it and you guys told me that this extremely interesting amphibian crocodile was within the game. And it's a pretty accurate depiction of it, something the Jurassic Park series isn't known for. That is, until Prionosuchus gets a frickin' sale. Yeah, once you evolve Prionosuchus within the game, Prionosuchus gains a sail on its back, running from its head to its tail. Similar to that of Spinosaurus or Dimetrodon, something the real Prionosuchus never had. And I understand it's inaccurate, but I think it's simply a reference to a relative of Prionosuchus, Platyhistrix, another Permian amphibian which actually did have a strange sail on its back, something that seems to be common in Permian animals. The Jurassic World game surprisingly features many other prehistoric crocodile-like amphibians, including Coolosuchus, Labyrinthodon, and even the weird boomerang-headed amphibian Diplocolis. I'd like to applaud Jurassic World for featuring the obscure and often forgotten prehistoric creatures. Alright, last time I made you guys vote between Megalodon, Arthropleura, and Titanoboa. And although I didn't count up an exact amount of votes, it's pretty easy to see that Arthro and Titanoboa are neck and neck with votes, with Megalodon left in the dust. So I'm going to say it's about a tie between Arthropleura and Titanoboa, with a e pretty equal amount of votes on either side. So, as your explainer, I will decide between the two. I have chosen to examine Arthropleura first, for two reasons. First reason is because not too many people know about Arthropleura. Titanoboa and Megalodon are pretty well known in just the general public, and I just think I should pick the one that's lesser known first. And second, I just got a package in the mail from Poland of an Arthropleura fossil. I bought the thing off of eBay, and it contains the fossilized armor plating of this creature. So I feel like it is very appropriate to talk about Arthropleura first, before we get to the others. Arthropleura was first discovered in 1853, when the strange tracks of a creature were discovered in the fossilized carboniferous mud of Scotland. The tracks came from a creature with two rows of legs made up of hundreds of tiny feet, one behind the other. The early paleontologists knew they were dealing with a giant, multi-legged bug. They gave the mysterious creature that left the mud tracks the name Arthropleura, meaning jointed ribs, in reference to its many segmented centipede like body. Arthropleura lived in what is now Scotland in northeastern North America during the Carboniferous period, long before even the dinosaurs. The Carboniferous was a time in Earth's history when there was a high amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. 63% more oxygen compared to today's oxygen levels. The high amount of oxygen allowed insects and arthropods to grow larger than ever before, meaning that seen with the giant bugs in King Kong is entirely possible with enough oxygen. Well, almost possible. Arthropleura is one organism that took full advantage of the highly oxygenated air. This millipede relative grew at least 2.6 meters or 8.5 feet long, longer than a car. Arthropleura was a giant, the largest of its time, only being beaten for largest known arthropod ever by Jackalopteris, an even larger arthropod, surprisingly not from the Carboniferous period. The length of a cow, Arthropleura stalked the Carboniferous floors. 
Although being a truly terrifying creature to encounter, Arthropleura most likely wouldn't be of any harm. Odds are it didn't eat meat. Studies have found fern spores in the digestive tracts of Arthropleura, something not seen in carnivores, suggesting Arthropleura ate plants over animals. But that doesn't mean it didn't engage in a little combat. The body of Arthropleura allows it to rear up and stand upright. Odds are that helped Arthropleura look more intimidating to equally as large reptiles and amphibians that lived in its environment. Arthropleura is truly one of prehistory's marvels, something right out of science fiction. Arthropleura has appeared in Walking with Monsters, where it was featured very briefly defending its home from other carbonivorous animals and later engaging in a fight with an amphibian. Arthropleura has also been more heavily featured in Prehistoric Park, where it is taken by Nigel Marvin to be featured in his park of prehistoric animals. And what an awesome episode that was. What a magnificent creepy crawly. Remember we saw the tracks of this prey. That rearing up is obviously a defensive reaction. I've been... Arthropleura has also been featured in Primeval, inaccurately appearing more centipede-like than millipede-like and also having a poisonous bite, something the real Arthropleura most likely didn't have and didn't need. And finally, Arthropleura was featured very briefly in David Attenborough's New Life and Neil deGrasse Tyson's Cosmos. Dragonflies here are as big as eagles, and the millipedes the size of alligators. Arthropleura was a miraculous creature, something that would make you and I feel like we had been shrunken down to the size of bugs, something so large and successful in its environment, yet now we only find fossils of this once great beast. What happened to Arthropleura, and why don't we have any giant bugs nowadays? Well, the answer to that question is easy. As the Carboniferous period came to a close, Earth started losing oxygen. The very gas that created these giant insects was diminishing. The Earth also started to get hotter and drier as a result of more volcanic activity in an area called the Siberian Traps. The large forests that covered the Earth during the Carboniferous period were dying out as, as the Earth started to become filled with deserts. This was the beginning of change and I guess the end. The Permian mass extinction killed over 90% of all life on Earth, including Arthropleura and other giant bugs of the Carboniferous. It was the only mass extinction that actually affected insects, and it would result in the extinction of almost all life on Earth, with the outcomes subsequently causing the reign of the dinosaurs after the old world died, leaving an open void for reptiles that were once outsized to evolve into many diverse forms. Arthropleura was simply a treasure only adapted to a rare condition in Earth's history that allowed insects to grow larger. Arthropleura could never exist today due to the considerably less amounts of oxygen in the air. But, maybe one day in the far future of Earth, the oxygen levels of our atmosphere will rise again, allowing the smaller modern descendants of Arthropleura to rise again. Time will tell. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Make sure you tune in for the next episode of Paleo Profile, which will be about, of course, Titanoboa. And remember, thanks for watching. And stay tuned for my other series, the Gravity Falls series and my Explanation series, which will start up soon again. And remember, thanks for watching. A is for the apple that he gave to me, but I found a worm inside. B is for beloved that I called.